Okay. Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dan. Uh, I'm as introduced. I'm one of the teaching fellows from uh, Lincoln Hospital. Uh, who's come over here today. I'm joined here. You notice this is a few of us at the front instead of just one person. I'm joined with Holly, my colleague from Lincoln, and Simon, uh, one of the teaching fellows here in NUH, because uh, this this project has really been a collaborative one. So I'm really been right from one of us presented. So we're going to do it kind of a, a bit of a joint thing. Um, so. So give you a bit of background before we talk about what osmosities are. Um, as I'm sure everyone in here being involved in education not in is aware, there's been extensive changes made to Nottingham's OSCE format over the last couple of years. Um, we've moved from more traditional checklists style OSCEs to these more complex, multifaceted fixed time stations with domain-based marking rather than checklist marking. Um, and I'm sure many of you will remember when this um, came in, um, <laughs> the students' responses at the time was one of horror and extreme anxiety because they've always known one type of OSCE and then suddenly we whipped it out from them and put a new OSCE in just as they're coming up to their finals. So there was um, a lot of anxiety going around and we really felt it uh, at Lincoln with our students. So um, we, think we thought um, something that would really help these students is if we could get them some kind of revision resource together where we could essentially get them a pack of mock OSCE stations that they could work with um, to revise that would make them sort of more familiar with this new exam format. Um, so crucially, there's two main things we wanted these, things, these mock OSCE stations to, for them to use to be. Firstly, we wanted them to be realistic, as I say. There's lots of OSCE resources out there. If you go on the internet, Google Mock OSCE or OSCE stations, there's millions. But none of them are like Nottingham's now, because Nottingham's are now subtly different in terms of how they're marked and structured. So we thought we need them to be realistic. We need them to be formatted like the real thing, structured like the real thing, with student instructions, patient instructions, examiner instructions, mark sheets, the whole shebang, all in a station so they can run it. Two people can run the station, or three people. Um, but the second crucial element was we wanted them to do it, not us. This is a lot of work. And actually, actually, there's really extensive evidence out there that shows <coughs> writing your own questions and writing your own assessment materials is an excellent way of revising. I know when I do MRCP and I do finals, that's how I learned a lot, was writing my own questions. It's so answering questions is known to be an excellent vision exercise, but also writing your own questions. Most of that um, literature exists in the realms of MCQs and written questions, but there is actually a little bit, and I mean a little bit, of literature out there saying that actually writing your own OSCE materials is a very effective vision exercise. So, in that context, our aims essentially were, we want the students to create some materials that they could benefit from in the process of the creation. So by writing the materials, we hope the student would learn it. So if you write an OSCE station about pancreatitis, you're probably going to come out afterwards understanding pancreatitis a bit better. Secondly, we hope if we could get enough students involved to write these stations, we'd end up with a nice pack of stations that we could then distribute to all of them for them to use and revise in the run-up to these new exams. And thirdly, um, we basically were hoping that by creating and using these materials, the students would be more familiar with this new structure to the OSCE, and therefore, with that increased familiarity, hopefully, we would see some decreased anxiety about the upcoming exams, because that anxiety was real. Um, so, this first year, uh, what we did at Lincoln, we got 19 students based on our three main CP3 modules there, which is MDD, Surgery and Critical Illness. We don't have medicine at Lincoln. Um, and we got 19 students who volunteered to take part, and with our support, they created 31 really good quality Markovsky stations across various modules. There were some prescribing ones as well. Um, and with our support, by that I mean we directed them in, in sort of telling them how it should be structured, and then when they bring them to them, we would review them, edit them if necessary, put them back to them, and then they would make any changes, or so, you know, if they got the treatment wrong or whatever, we would correct them. But for the most part, they, they wrote it all. Um, and then we combined all these stations into a booklet, including with some guidance at the front, just explaining an FAQ of how the exams are, how to mark them, da da da, uh, and we released it to them uh, via Dropbox. Uh, and this release, again, <laughs> generated significant student interest because they all suddenly go, oh my god, there's a revision resource for these new exams, and it spread like wildfire. Um, so much so that the next year's cohort um, in Nottingham came to Simon. Yeah, so um, a lot of the students that I'd met in Nottingham shared that anxiety about the OSCEs, um, and they mentioned about the Smosky's book that um, the Lincoln were helping me by these one that helping me. So then it was sort of through happy accident that I met these two and they gave me last August. 
Um, and then we were able to use our curative practice as uh, teaching fellows to bring what was an excellent part, an excellent education activity to Queen's. Um, and overcoming the geographical boundaries, we had to use email, we had to use WhatsApp, we met up one or two three times in person to bring that aspect, that great uh, education opportunity for students to please. Um, then whenever I came to run it, um, like you guys did as well, we made it a voluntary exercise. So I had 30 students on medicine with me. Um, and I gave them the sales pitch of what Smoskies were, but made it completely voluntary, and we had 100% of my students getting involved with it, um, which was quite exciting. I didn't think it was going to be all of them. I thought maybe the top five human beings would be the rest of them would go by the wayside, but a huge amount of engagement with it. And I think that was really important because the students took ownership of it as well. So it was their revision and their project, I and mean, there was a lot of help with each other. Um, I think in terms of the guidance that I gave them, I think I took what Holly and Dan had done and I tried to codify it and put it in a booklet for them, so that a little advisory document about how to basically how to write an OSCE station. Um, so hopefully that will make the process more, make um, it more easily replicated um, after I leave, and then also we'll have a bit different sites and different LEDs if they wish to do it. Um, because medicine is such a vast area that covers a huge number of other objectives, I had to be a bit more of a shepherd in terms of giving the forums a small list of topics that we could choose from, so I didn't end up with 30 stations about atrial fibrillation or 30 stations about MI. So I had to be a bit more of a shepherd and a facilitator in terms of giving them the different forums, different topics that could hear to. Yeah. But there was the feedback was unanimously positive. Yeah. Mm. Well, we wanted to do that. But the, Simon basically took what we'd done and I think improved it slightly. And it made it, it took our rather informal exercise and introduced some formal guidance and some, um, some more structure into how the process worked, which was really good because then we used that later on ourselves. And adding the modules in that we didn't have. So and really also, got, yeah, it gave us that medicine yeah. module that we didn't have, so suddenly our resource became so much more complete by working across sites. More useful for students. So unfortunately, the way we distributed through Dropbox, we don't have any hardcore numbers as to who was actually using it. But anecdotally, it seems to have spread like wildfire, and a lot of people seem to have heard of it. Um, everyone was asking us about it. And overall, our feedback was extremely positive. So we um, sent a survey monkey out to some of our authors. 37 of them responded. And apart from one disgruntled purple bar chart person, um, <laughs> everyone else was really happy to have authored an authorization and felt it had been useful for their revision and also for understanding how they're going to be marked. Because um, although they still have to know how to do a cardio exam, it will be you know, just four marks for examining the entire system rather than a checklist. And that was quite scary for them still. So. We also surveyed people that use the SMOSCI. We got 50 responses, and they were all happy, both in understanding the exam and finding it useful, which we were really pleased about. Here is some quotes, which I'll let you read. I don't think we had any negative quotes to bias against. So I don't think that, yeah, genuinely, I <laughs> don't think that was a, a single one. Um, but generally, the person didn't comment. Yeah. <laughs> they felt the, the key thing was this was the closest revision resource they had to their exams, and they found it really, really useful. It even inspired some of them to get an OSCE practice group together and start making their own informal SMOSCIs too, which was good. So, so yeah, I think the SMOSCIs did fulfil the three main objectives. I think we managed to create a useful revision exercise for the authors. Um, I think we created a good quality, a large good quality resource which is openly accessible to all students, not just the authors, all students within CP3, um, and it's made through Google <coughs> and Dropbox. Um, and I think it did improve the authors and the users' familiarity with the exam. Um, and uh, in the, whilst we didn't assess the, uh, formally assess it, um, in the free test comments there were lots of comments about it, it made me feel like I understood the exam better and I feel felt that that's anxious. Um, so finally, just in terms of future plans, I've actually, we very much focused on CP3s and then it occurred to me this year that actually the CP2s probably need it even more um, because their OSCE is, I find it terrifying, I don't think I would pass it at the moment without <laughs> going back through my, my fourth year. Um, so I tried to expand it to them but it was fairly late on so I only got to do it with one round of boots but I managed to get a further 20 stations from the CP2s which I released. Um, 
but there's a lot of room still for expansion in CP2, because child health in particular on the station. I'd love to expand that massively. Uh, and our main hope for expanding the Smoskies is to get other sites to potentially join in with us in the way that Simon did from NUH. Uh, we want to expand across all the sites if we can and get loads of different modules like psychiatry, HCOL, GPs, modules that we don't have so far contributing. So that's our kind of, I don't know, maybe it's idealistic, but I have this vision of we have a central bank on Dropbox where we can all upload stations to um, and that people can contribute to and take from. They're, they're, not only are they great for use for the students that can access them at the time, they're really useful for us when students land in our lap for a revision week and we're like, oh God, we need to put on some medicine revision. We don't teach medicine. Let's pull out some stations from the bank and run some scenarios with it. It's so useful. Um, so that's it, and that's our contact use and just some references for our literature. Thank you.